You're watching Adventure Sean, where I'm here in Florida and about to experience a day at the Kennedy Space Center. I am so excited because it's a bucket list place for me. I have always wanted to go. Now, I'm here at Icon Park this morning because I've actually booked an arranged tour that's going to take me down there with transportation, uh, experience it all, and then bring me back here as well. Overall, it's a 10-hour experience. I booked it through Grey Line Orlando. And yeah, don't get me wrong, it's not a cheap experience. Check out their website for all their different deals that they do. However, it's something that I've wanted to do for so long. Uh, I've not got a car with me this trip. And of course, Kennedy Space Center uh, is a little bit further around. Out, uh, than where I am now in Orlando. So yeah, uh, when you book the tour, um, you say where you want to be picked up from. I'm here at Icon Park, uh, which is literally a five minute walk from my hotel, but they've got lots of different places. And then they'll pick you up and take you on an excursion and then drop you off back here uh, 10 hours later. It's 8 a.m. And uh, yes, I'm going to be back here for 6 p.m. So come and join me. I'm going to show you the full experience. It's going to be a long one, this. Great day at the Kennedy Space Center. Book it list, first time. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, here we go then. So it took about 60 minutes with no traffic from Icon Park in Orlando. We've arrived here at the entrance plaza to the Kennedy Space Center. Oh, there's the countdown clock off to the left just there. Seen so many photos and videos over the years and watched so many rocket launches where you just kind of see the Space Center as well. And just to be here and see it, amazing. But yeah, the tour guide was great on there, giving us lots of information. Yeah, we're just following her now and she's gonna take us over to the entrance. But yeah, expect it to be busy. But we are here at the Kennedy Space Center. Look at this, wow. The NASA globe just over there, incredible. So here's a map of the Kennedy Space Center. And yeah, as you can see, it is a pretty huge complex. And yeah, obviously I've got a copy of the map as well. The tour guide gave us that on the bus. But yeah, you can see we're down here at the entrance. And I believe first we're gonna be heading round to Atlantis just to try and avoid the crowds. And then this is where we get on the buses that of course can take us up to the other parts of the experience. Really there's two kind of main areas here at the Kennedy Space Center. So yeah, just going through the security area now. And then yeah, we'll be heading into the complex. Okay then, so just coming through the entrance turnstiles. Yeah, it didn't take too long to get through security, only about five minutes, and the queue is pretty big actually. Yeah, plenty of areas to get you straight through. There's the rocket garden off to the left hand side. And yeah, there's so many different experiences here. Hopefully gonna get in as much as I can do today. But yeah, the tour guide who's taking us round as part of this package that I've booked has recommended that we go down towards the back first to Atlantis. I tell you what, it's so dramatic with the music and seeing the rocket garden. It's beautiful day for it as well. In Cape Canaveral. So this is the bus area off to the right hand side. And yeah, the coaches leave every 15 minutes or so. And it takes about 15 minutes to actually get to the other part of the space center. But yeah, I can see why she's recommended coming here first. Space Shuttle Atlantis. So yeah, the tour guide, she's literally bringing us here first, she's explained the rest of the day, uh, and then we're kind of up to our own devices, we can go round and back on the coach for 5 p.m. Yeah, look at this, wow. Really impressive to come and see the scale. Space Shuttle Atlantis. Now this is of course a replica of the Space Shuttle. But yeah, we're gonna be seeing lots of real rockets here today. Yeah, this is just kind of here at the entrance to the Atlantis area. And yeah, I can definitely see why we've come down this end first. It was really busy for the first rocket tour down at that end. Uh, but up here, yeah, it's really quiet. Now, of course, some of the things that I'm going to be seeing today are movies. And yeah, that's where we're going to be starting our experience here in Atlantis. Now, as you can see on the sign, there's no photography allowed inside the theatres. So yeah, I'll see you when we get through. Look at this, wow. The music as well, that's what really does it. So dramatic. The greatest engineering accomplishments. Oh.
Well, I've got to say, that was quite the reveal there. Very emotional of Atlantis. Oh, that was brilliant. We watched the film for about five or six minutes um, at first, kind of detailing the overall build and uh, the ideas behind Atlantis. We then moved into a second cinema, and as you saw there at the end, um, the, the screen lifted up, and then there, there she was. Honestly, what an absolutely epic reveal. But uh, here we go, let's go have a look around. Twenty six years of service and thirty three missions later, here she is. And I tell you what, absolutely huge and amazing to think of this amazing spacecraft has been to space thirty three times. And I'm standing right here next to it. It is incredible. See, I can really see why she wanted us to come here first. I would definitely recommend that, whether you're just coming of your own accord and driving here and parking up, or coming on the organized tour. Come here first, because you really feel the emotion, watching the video there, kind of about the construction and all the issues, and 12 years worth of uh, designing and issues, you know, to get this ready. And then, of course, you get that epic reveal there, which was pretty stunning. The screen's really cool up there as well, at the edge of the Earth. I love that. Space Shuttle Atlantis. I'm really emotional. I, I love space travel. It really interests me. So yeah, coming here and seeing this, I'm tearing up to be honest. It, it's just beautiful to come and see. Here's a look at the back of her. Oh wow. Gosh. Just after watching so many documentaries and oh, just to actually be here is a huge passion of mine. It really is. And I've always wanted to come. But yeah, so what we're actually looking at here, of course, is the main kind of cabin if you like just here and what really made Atlantis special was the fact that um, normally everything was kind of one use only and disposed of and of course Atlantis could land back here in Florida uh, and of course all the, the kind of fuel uh, containers you know they would all detach and yeah Atlantis would, be, would kind of be left there 2.5 million parts in total like oh there's so much to look around here I really feel like one day isn't enough to be honest so let's uh, yeah let's go for it there is a simulator experience in here that I'm looking forward to I'm not too sure where it is but yeah I'm gonna get there soon because I know that's gonna be at, uh, really busy there we go held up here of course on these huge supports Wow I look at the back over there space shuttle Atlantis Wow so what's actually really cool, which I didn't realize, was the fact that because we're on a guided tour, we've been let into here first. It's normally one of the most popular areas. And yeah, we've got let in here before everybody else, uh, so we can get to the space shuttle launch experience. So yeah, that's really cool. So I'm gonna head down there first before having a look around the rest of this building. Oi, and what better way? Let's <laughs> come down to the lower level on the slide, lovely. <laughs> the steps, there's elevators. Why not go the fun way, that's what I say. There's so much to look around here, like there really is. Wow, we're right underneath Atlantis now. And here it is, the shuttle experience over in this corner. Yeah, this gets really long waits. I know a lot of people that come here and don't actually get to do this, so yeah. Really good that we've got in here early. And we can experience the shuttle launch. Oh, here we go. So for this experience, all bags need to go into a locker. Um, and yeah, they are free to get the lockers. They don't charge any extra for that. Yeah, massive queue line set up, as you can see. Oh, well, the astronaut training simulator. Yeah, in total, it's a 30 minute kind of experience this. So yeah, here we go. And those engines like, we watch this countdown go down and then all of a sudden it's there, zero. And boom, I mean, these things,
now, whenever you see a space launch, hopefully you'll remember your experience here today. And at least in spirit, you'll be on board. And who knows? Maybe one day you will fly with us. is there from the shuttle launch experience and overall that was really good fun now like i say it was a 30 minute experience including the pre-shows in terms of time on the actual ride itself uh, the video was only about four and a half minutes however it was really good fun kind of similar ride system really to the likes of star tours that you can find at the disney parks however you can tell this tilted really far back um just a, a little seat belt though nothing too intense on there uh, and what was really cool of course we we're watching the visuals at the front what i did didn't expect was when the actual roof opened up and then we could see the earth and of course all the stars that was a really nice effect in there um, but yeah it wasn't too intense um, yeah they do build it up quite a lot that it's a really intense experience if you've been on mission space uh, in Epcot or Walt Disney World that's a lot more intense and I do feel like that kind of simulates space travel a little bit better however this was still really good fun and I'm glad that I got to experience it Anyway, I've got upstairs again now uh, because it's kind of like a, a walkthrough experience this down to the lower level and that's where the simulator is. So I think now uh, I'm going to start back up here at the top, look at everything up here for making my way downstairs and exit into some of the other parts of the experience. So yeah, let's go. I tell you what, it really is amazing to see Space Shuttle Atlantis in person after seeing so many photos and videos of it. Just to be here standing next to it, amazing. It really is just to come and see that. But yeah, here's a look at the Hubble Space Telescope that you can see just here. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, the tour guide kind of gave us some tips and showed us down to here. She's now gone and we're meeting back at the coach for five o'clock. So yeah, you kind of have your own devices now to go around, explore and do what you want to. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So yeah, we're back up here at the top. Let's have a little look around. I mean, you've got to think there's so much to read and there's a lot of screens with information as well, um, which is really cool. Yeah, there really is so much to see. I feel like, you know, you could spend a couple of days here, to be honest. That's a great effect though, isn't it, up there with the Earth? But yeah, another look just here. Can't get over it, Space Shuttle Atlantis, and it's huge, much bigger, like when you've never seen a, a rocket before, you, know, you don't really realize the size of them. Oh, this is quite a cool experience. Let's go and have a look inside. Wow, look at how complex it is in here. All the buttons, levers, screens. Like, how do you learn all this? Crazy, isn't it? All down the back here as well. Wow, great photo opportunity as well, isn't it? What does this one do? <laughs> So this here is a nozzle that is actually part of the engine. It's actually visible from behind the orbiter. So yeah, here's a look at that. Huge, isn't it? And of course, you've got so much information all the way around. You can kind of take as long or as little as you want to reading that. But of course, I've got so much to see, so I can't stop for too long. Let's continue on down the ramp just here. Wow. So they've also got a International Space Station play area here, which is quite interesting. There you go, and the space station is larger than a six bedroom house. The internal volume of a Boeing 747, that gives you a good idea on the size, doesn't it? Weighs almost a million pounds, and then travels the equivalent distance to the moon and back in about a day. But yeah, that's quite a cool little interactive experience there, a little play area that they've got here. And here's all the plaques just here commemorating all of the different missions, of course, that Space Shuttle Atlantis undertook during its operational life. Well, if you've ever wondered where astronauts go to the toilet when they're on the space shuttle, there you go. There's a look at the toilet. <laughs> to be honest, it doesn't look too different um, compared to, uh, yeah, a standard toilet, if you like. There you go, there's all the different steps that are involved because, yeah, there's more to think about than just going to the normal toilet. <laughs> there you go, there's the space station play area. It's quite cool, isn't it? So, obviously, we're down here at the bottom now. Space grub, that's one thing I struggle with, the food. 
There you go. Dining table all set up over here. <laughs> it's really interesting stuff. And this is where the astronauts would sleep just here. Quite a nice little cozy setup. And there, to be honest, got your laptop on there. That's it. You get watching some uh, Adventure Sean or Theme Park Worldwide on there. <laughs> there you go. This is a really impressive view underneath now. Atlantis, yeah. Really realise the scale of it from here. Brilliant. So yeah, we're downstairs now. Obviously the shuttle experience just over there and we've got a few more things to see. Love this model just here. Fantastic. There's a 1 to 15th scale replica just here, and that is beautiful. And yeah, this is telling you all about the construction process. Fascinating stuff, it really is. I wish I had time to kind of read all of these. I mean, you know, the attraction closes at 5 o'clock. You know, it's not long enough, is it, really? You know, just to go around and see everything. Yeah, really? obviously, we're going to get to see this building. It's over 400 foot tall, that is, fun fact for you. We're going to get to see that from the, uh, from the bus when we're going down to the other end, from a distance, anyway. Look at the huge tyres just here. Of course, all part of the landing gear. And yeah, you can see on the photo just at the bottom there. Fascinating stuff. See, so that's kind of the angle it felt like we were on in the simulator. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. Now, this is really iconic to see. Oh, the NASA Astro Van. Love it. So, yeah, of course, this was used for 27 years. And, of course, this would take the astronauts over to the launch pad itself. Yeah, really iconic. I've seen this in so many photos and videos and documentaries that I've watched over the years. And here it is. Just a cool thing to say that you've seen, isn't it? And that's looking back up to where we started. So here's a look at the Space Shuttle Tunnel Adapter Truss Assembly. There we go, and a bit of information there for you. So yeah, this was like a, a backup, if you like, an external airlock, just in case they needed to close the doors manually. They must have had to go through so much training just to learn all about this and exactly what to do. So this section is known as Forever Remembered. And yeah, these are all the fallen friends and heroes. So this here is the left side body panel from the Challenger, January the 28th, 1986. And the Columbia cockpit windows, February the 1st, 2003. Inspirational and amazing people that will be remembered forever here at Kennedy Space Center. And yeah, here's a look at the various different versions. Of course, you've got the Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, of course, that we've seen in here, and Endeavour there as well. Well, that really was amazing, learning all about Space Shuttle Atlantis and a huge area, one of the main events, so to speak, of Kennedy Space Center. Great to get in there early, get there first. Uh, crowds really seem like they're coming in now. So yeah, even if you're not coming as part of an organized tour, I would head there first because the simulator is a must do. Everybody wants to do that when they come here. Uh, of course you do, um, especially if you're at like a good intense experience. It wasn't ridiculously intense. However, uh, it was certainly, you know, not just a normal kind of tracked ride. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed it. 
Anyway, the best piece of advice um, that the tour guide gave me was to actually now get on the bus that takes us to the other area because like I say, it's split into two sections. So if we do that, it then means that I've got more time to enjoy everything down in this first section, um, of course, afterwards. So yeah, that is the plan. Looks like there's quite a wait, um, but there's loads of different buses. Uh, I think it takes about 15 minutes or so uh, to take you down to the other area. And yeah, they just keep uh, shuttling back and forward. So yeah, I'm gonna go and get in line for that now. Well, it's a beautiful day for it as well. Here in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and yes, here's the entrance over to the bus tours. So yeah, boarding between 9.30 and 2.30. Shows how much there is to see over at the other end, doesn't it? The last buses are 2.30 going that way. So yeah, they recommend two to three hours uh, down here at the other end. So yeah, should give me plenty of time afterwards to come back down here and see these other experiences. And of course, see the uh, rocket area as well over there. Very efficient here at the Kennedy Space Center. What I'd expect really from a place that launches shuttles up into space. Um, but yeah, they've got plenty of coaches on just here. It only took about seven or eight minutes. I mean, the line looked pretty long, but yeah, got that many running. And yeah, we're gonna have our journey now up to the other part of the experience. It represents NASA's earliest efforts to send humans into space. These Redstone rockets were formerly ballistic missiles provided to NASA by the U.S. Army. In October of 1958, NASA formally organized Project Mercury with a mission to investigate man's reaction to this new environment and safely recover the capsule and its pilot. It is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume and is the place where NASA completes the final assembly of its rockets before launch. The sheer scale of this building is hard to grasp, even when you're right next to it. Do you ever feel really sick? After the space shuttle program, a major renovation to the inside of this building began to accommodate NASA's next generation of rockets, the Space Launch System, or SLS. Lockheed Martin has developed a capsule called Orion that will sit atop the SLS rocket. This capsule is designed to facilitate human exploration of the moon and eventually Mars. The first flown Orion capsule from Exploration Flight Test 1, EFT-1, sits inside the NASA Now exhibit at the Visitor Complex. This uncrewed test flight launched atop the Delta IV heavy rocket in 2014. The four and a half hour flight took the spacecraft around the Earth two times before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. So I hear that you're going to be the Wow, it is amazing to see this up close. The vehicle assembly building building there. Bit more Absolutely. The Humongous building. Each of the stars on the US flag are six is feet. So and that is crazy. amazing seeing the vehicle assembly building up close absolutely huge and yeah I like how they're playing videos and information on the bus ride there as well but uh, here we go they have arrived down here at the Apollo and Saturn 5 area so we've just watched a short movie and here we are in the firing room it is one of those rare moments when history is not being made destiny is being embraced
Kennedy Space Centre. I've wanted to come here for so many years and just to be here and experiencing it, oh, it really is amazing. And I've got to say, it's so well thought out. Just being in there and seeing the room where it all happened and oh, absolutely spectacular. And uh, yeah, it was really well simulated as well with the countdown. And actually, I tried to film a little bit of it at the back of the room, the kind of simulated, um, of course, the, the room shaking a little bit because of the rocket only being, well, very close to where we are at the, uh, the launch control point. And then, of course, we've come out of there and into this absolutely huge room. And look at this view. You're going to love this. Look at this. Wow. Absolutely spectacular. Worth pointing out, you don't have to watch the film there if you don't want to. However, I definitely would. It took about 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, and yeah, well worth doing in my opinion. It really builds you up. It's coming to see this. Wow. And there's so much to look around up here as well. There really is, again, so many different experiences and interactives all the way around. Wow. Look at this. Words cannot describe everything here, can they? Like, it really is amazing. Just outside here as well, you've got the area, uh, what looks over towards where SpaceX is actually launched as well. So yeah, we'll check out that before I head back on the, the bus down. But I'm gonna get some food first, because I believe there's a restaurant up here. Uh, get some food before having a, a walk around and seeing all this, but wow, absolutely incredible. Well, there it is in all of its glory, the absolutely spectacular Saturn V rocket. Wow. The scale of it, photos and videos really don't do it justice. Incredible. And there's so much to see in here. Now, I've just had some food over here at the Moon Rock Cafe. Really nice place. They do uh, burgers, fries, chicken tenders, salads, pizza. And yeah, it's not too badly priced. I had chicken tenders, fries, a drink, and also a chocolate muffin. And it was like $12, so yeah, I don't think that's too bad at all. Yeah, this is like the main restaurant down here. Uh, and then you've also got various food options down at the main part of the visitor center. So yeah, I've just come down to get some food. I'm gonna go back down this way now and kind of work my way uh, back in this direction, looking at all the different exhibits and things to see in here. But yeah, absolutely incredible. Starting off down the bottom here with a look at the crew hatch. Yeah, looks pretty big from here, doesn't it? Let's uh, head up to the top here and go and have a look. All seven we on the first flight to the moon. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's not much space in there. I was expecting it to go really far back. There you go. Blimey, not much room at all. So this over here gives you a really good idea on the size of the Saturn V rocket, as you can see, just there. So of course we've got Big Ben in London, just off to the right there. Statue of Liberty, the Space Shuttle, and then the tallest redwood tree. I had no idea they were that big, to be honest, but there you go. Crazy. Here's a fantastic model that shows us the inside. We press and hold just here. There we go. Shows the different stages there first stage second stage and of course the third stage just there all coming together ready for countdown and there we have liftoff wow i love seeing all this footage it's just so weird after seeing documentaries and footage like that and to actually be here where it all happens incredible but yeah you've got a huge outdoor area just off to the right here and yeah the launch pads are all over in that direction on the other side of the water and in fact, that tower that you can see just there, that is actually over where SpaceX is launched. And there's actually, at the time of recording, a SpaceX launch in about two weeks' time. So yeah, by the time I've got this on, it's probably next week uh, at some point, that is. Yeah, so SpaceX will be launching. Obviously, if you are coming to the visitor center on a launch day, um, then yeah, you know, things are a little bit different. Obviously, it'd be even busier and also um, different ticket options and things as well with that one. I mean, this is a kind of a premium viewing area down here, and then it's cheaper to view um, down in the main part of the visitor center. Yeah, it all needs to be booked online if you are coming on launch day. So this section's all about the moon, 4.6 billion years old. And yeah, these are some of the different things that they'd use up there on the moon, such as the lunar core sample tube just there. And yeah, that basically 
and we'll retrieve samples from below the moon's surface. How interesting is that? And of course that famous quote from Neil Armstrong up there, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Wow. Another Astro van just there as well. Of course, we saw one of those earlier on. There is so much to see here. There's so much reading material and screens and videos to watch. It really is crazy. And here's a tribute to the Apollo 1 spacecraft. This is a really cool effect, just walking over the bridge just here. And with all the visuals underneath, you actually feel like you're walking over onto the rocket. And just over here, you can actually touch a moon rock. Just here, there we go. This is quite cool, isn't it? Something to say that you've done. Very solid, just there. Of course, there's a bit of information about the moon rock for you. control. Talking to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin when he landed on the moon on Apollo 11. So, oh wow, I love the look of this. So here's a look at the lunar roving vehicle, the LRV, basically a dune buggy. This is really cool. Wow. Just coming and seeing all of this stuff is a huge bucket list of mine. Amazing, I'm so glad that you're watching this with me here, discovering it for the first time here on Adventure Sean. Here we go, look at this awesome space suit just here. Oh wow, really cool to see. And then of course you've got the space helmet over on the left here. And then famous moon boots just there as well. And yeah, this in particular space suit was actually used for training here at the Kennedy Space Center. So I'm just about to head into the Lunar Theater. This is located right down at the bottom on the left-hand side, just opposite the restaurant where I ate at. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be another movie, uh, so I'm gonna watch that and find out more information. It was a moment shared by an entire world. Well, the movie was about 10 minutes in length and it was really good and I loved all the effects in there as well. Of course, learning all about man landing on the moon. But yeah, here we've got a capsule from Apollo 14. Let's have a look at just here. There really is so much to look around in here, fantastic. And yeah, here's a flight plan for Apollo 7. Seeing the Saturn V and learning more about the Apollo missions really has been fantastic. I've been down here for around one hour and 45 minutes. There really is so much to see and explore and read. And if you wanted to, like I say, you could come here for a couple of days and just take it all in. Uh, but yeah, I've just come outside now to have a little walk around the Moon Tree Garden here. So all these trees around here represent a different Apollo mission. And yeah, you can see them all around with a plaque on as well with the crew, of course, that were on board. 
Oh, absolutely amazing. It must be to be an astronaut. Can you imagine? Scary, but amazing. Now, I was mentioning, of course, about launches. Yeah, this is one of the places where you can watch them. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you've got all the seating set up just there, then the water, and then all the launches uh, happen out over in that direction. Absolutely fantastic. And before I get the bus back, I thought it'd be worth just coming out here, having a bit of a look around. Absolutely awesome. I'm loving it here today so far. I really hope that you're enjoying being part of this adventure. The eagle has landed. There you go, a fantastic statue in honor of Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Absolutely brilliant to see. And again, in just a couple of weeks time, people are gonna be sat here waiting for SpaceX to launch. And yeah, if I zoom in just over there, you can see the launch pad for SpaceX and all the other launch pads, more of them off down to the right hand side. You can just see the towers going up into the sky. How I'd love to be here one day. That's another bucket list of mine. Now I've actually been here to NASA and Kennedy Space Center. I'd love to be here for a rocket launch one day. Well, it's time to say goodbye to the Saturn V, exit through the gift shop just over here, and make my way down onto the coach. But yeah, you can stay down here for as long as you want to. There's no time limits or anything like that. Yeah, there's quite a few gift shops that I've seen and loads of food options. <laughs> this is quite cool, isn't it? with the rocket there in the middle to hold all the clothes up. I love that. There we go, and talking to SpaceX. Got the t-shirts just there, there you go. There's also the world's largest space shop. Well, that's down at the other end, so I'll take you for a little look in there later on. For 150,000 species of plants and animals, I want to introduce you to Becky Bolt, who has been a NASA wildlife ecologist here at KSC for nearly 35 years. After a short bus ride then, I'm back here now at the main part of the Kennedy Space Center, about to have a walk around the rocket garden that we can see just over here. But uh, yeah, there's so much to see, there really is. So many different buildings. You got the Heroes and Legends building just over there. So I'll be sure to have a little walk through. And so uh, yeah, there's so much more to see down here as well. There's also quite a big choice of shops and restaurants uh, down here with all sorts of food available. And it seems like it's gonna be getting even bigger here with Gateway. Um, yeah, the Deep Space Launch Complex. So yeah, this is gonna be launching in spring 2022. So yeah, not long to go until uh, that is going to be open and you can see the big building for it over there. Um, but yes, we've got the rocket garden over here. So yeah, gonna have a little walk around here and see uh, all of these rockets. And of course, you've got all the information about them on the plaques just underneath. So 109 feet, this is the Gemini Titan II that we can see just here. It's a beast, isn't it? It's great getting up close and seeing all of these. I love this, just walking around and seeing all the rockets and reading about all the different uses. You got the Juno 2 just here at 76 foot tall. And yeah, that was gonna be used for one of the first missions to the moon, but obviously, you know, it kind of paved the way for future other missions with uh, other rockets. You know, that was back in the 50s. Um, yeah, it's all really interesting learning about them. That's impressive, isn't it? You get the scale of these a lot more when you're here in person and not on camera. But yeah, cracking to see. Yeah, look at the size of this beast all the way down the side. Get some more facts and information for you. So this beast is known as the Delta II. Now we've got some information just here all about it. So yeah, this was used for the first 48 operational GPS satellites, 52 science and exploration missions, 57 national security missions, and 46 commercial missions. And there's the stats of the rocket just there for you. Oh, it's so cool though, this, walking around and seeing all these rockets. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. I would definitely recommend a visit here. And if you're really into it, I'd plan a couple of days. You know, if you really want to learn every single detail, read all the plaques, watch every movie, there's still quite a few more bits to see uh, down at this end. You know, I've only got just over 90 minutes left. So yeah, it's crazy really. Time flies when you're having a good time. Well, the biggest rocket down here in the rocket garden is the Saturn One that we can see just here. And this paved the way for the Saturn V, of course, that we saw earlier on. And yeah, a bit of information all about that there for you. Yeah, really fascinating stuff. So yeah, gonna carry on down this way, have a look at some of these. Well, it looks like the theater is just opening up here. So if I can get in in time, 
gonna head into Heroes and Legends. It's like some surreal, kind of magical in a way, world coming here to Kennedy Space Center. Just being surrounded by all this technology and history. It really is unlike anywhere else I've ever been. I'm so lucky to be here and I really appreciate you all watching and coming and joining me for this one. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, we're right next to the main entrance just down there now. I've got to say, they do a fantastic job of the movies and of course at the end coming out and yeah, having the rockets to look at, it really is brilliant. Huge fan of the overall setup here and how it's done because obviously you've got to think you are watching quite a lot of movies throughout the day with lots of information. However, uh, the way they do it is really fun as much as entertaining and also factual as well, which I do really like because sometimes just listening to information and screens all the time can get a bit too much. Whereas here, it's perfect in there. It was like an IMAX screen. Um, there was wind effects in there, lots of lighting. And yeah, overall, it was absolutely brilliant. I was a big fan of that. And here's a look at Mission Control for Mercury. And a look just here at the Gemini 9 capsule. That is tiny, isn't it? God, it'd be a bit claustrophobic spending a lot of time in there. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, this is awesome in here and a fantastic tribute to all of the amazing astronauts of the United States of America. Wow. So this exhibit's all about the nature in the surrounding area. I mean, when we was on the bus coming back from the other part, it's telling us a lot about the nature that can be found around here, but yeah, really interesting especially with all the rocket launches you wouldn't think there'd be as much nature around here but i guess that's why they also want to showcase this you know and show that it's not you know impacting the area's wildlife yeah the exhibits are really well done especially the screen based ones but having extra props and um, things kind of coming down and revealing the rockets i think it's really nicely done wow look at that bald eagle just there Back outside then now, and here's a good fact for you. So the International Space Station is eight times the size of this mural just on the wall here. And yeah, it's a pretty big mural, isn't it? And of course, you've got all the countries down here. They're all a part of that program. But yeah, it's a really nice setup. It does very much feel like a theme park walking around this section here with all the different buildings, things like the ice cream shops. You know, it does have the look and vibe of a theme park in this section. Yeah, you've got another cinema experience just over there, the Universe Theatre, the astronaut training experience off to the right. There's a play area down here to the left. And yeah, you've got the world's largest space shop. So I'm gonna go and take a look inside there. We have so many great photo opportunities. I like this one just here with the NASA logo. Well, they're not joking when they say it's the world's largest, it is absolutely humongous in here. It's even on two levels. <laughs> you can literally buy anything and everything, NASA and space related in here. Apart from an actual rocket, of course. <laughs> but yeah, you can get loads of great stuff. And some of the merchandise is really nice, and it's also not overpriced. Like I said earlier on with my lunch, that was a good price. The merchandise, $20. Like, I think that's perfectly fine uh, for a t-shirt and something like this, and just to have um, you know, a nice piece of memorabilia from coming to the Kennedy Space Center. Dream big, I like that. That's the thing coming here, it's very inspirational, especially watching all the movies. Oh, here's your SpaceX merch. Oh, yeah. 
You get all the Lego models here as well. The Discovery Space Shuttle there in Lego form. Why have you got to spare one hundred dollars and get yourself one of these suits just here? They're nice, aren't they? Imagine I'll get that. I'll walk around Alton Towers. <laughs> oh, but no, the shop's great. Much like everything else here, it's all done to a very high finish and great standard. Uh, but yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Absolutely brilliant day. But I tell you what, I've not got long left now, and so I've got to get on the bus. So yeah, there's still a few more bits around here to see. Obviously, I've seen the main bits, or at least I think so, from doing the research and listening to the tour guide. Oh, there's still a few other little experiences around here. So I'm going to have a quick look around and just show you what else there is on offer down here in this section before wrapping up the vlog. So there's an IMAX cinema just over here. Now the tour guide did say that only really do this if you have time to save it until later uh, because it's good but it's nothing spectacular compared to uh, some of the other things. So, But yeah, we're going to have a little look inside here. Planet Play. Oh wow, so the films in the IMAX are really long. 38 minutes for Asteroid Hunters and Journey to Space 3D, 41 minutes, wow. That is crazy. So, yeah, you know, my advice is check the times when you get here. Obviously, you do get given a times guide, but because the uh, actual tour guide said it wasn't anything spectacular, I thought, well, I'll save it until now. But, um, yeah, I've missed that one. And obviously, with this one, I would uh, miss the bus going back because, yeah, it's at 5 o'clock. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to see the IMAX. However, I will show you inside Planet Play just around here. But yeah, I can kind of see why she said leave it until later on because if you're sitting down watching something for that period of time, you know, it's valuable time, you know, when you could be seeing something else. Some nice lighting in here. And yeah, this is basically a big play area for kids just on the other side of there. And a couple more interactive experiences in here as well. There really is so much to see. Nine till five really isn't long enough. So much to see and do here. There really is. I found another little area now. And yeah, look at this. Wow. Fantastic to see these big jets just here. And yeah, these supersonic jets uh, are used by the US Air Force. And uh, yeah, they were produced between 1961 and 1972. And yeah, you can see a couple of photos there of them in action. And of course, the space shuttle just down there as well. Well, I don't know if you can read that sign just over there, but already there has been 11 launches so far this year. Crazy, isn't it? Especially because we're only in March. Also out here, you've got the Space Mirror Memorial just here as well, on this lovely body of water that we can see. And yeah, it's an absolutely huge memorial structure that we can see just here with all the names on there. So much to see and not enough time. But what an absolutely fantastic day. I'm gonna still take you around the corner and show you some of these other areas. I've got a little bit of time. I just don't wanna go into like a 20, 30 minute movie and end up missing the bus back. Yeah, that is the good thing. If you are driving up here yourself, you haven't got to worry about that. Like I could have done the IMAX if I wanted to, but it's something to return to in the future and also whatever the building um, around the corner as well in that large building. But I know what the highlight is for me today. It was definitely inside there. I absolutely loved learning all about Atlantis. So in this plaza area, you've also got Journey to Mars just over here. So yeah, we'll go and take a look inside. Not gonna have time to see the show. However, I'm sure we'll still be able to have a good look around in here and see exactly what's on display. Millions of people were traveling by air. Many of you probably came here on an airline, never gave it a second thought, right? Well, over the next couple of decades, commercial space transportation has the power to transform our world in ways not seen. So this is a show in here where you can just kind of walk in and listen to the information, which is really cool. It's not kind of a, a sit-in experience, you know, behind a closed door. So that's quite nice. Uh, it means that you can just come in and have a little walk around at your own accord and see a talk. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you've got one of the original rovers on Mars just here, which is really interesting to see. This is really cool looking, isn't it? This space exploration vehicle. There you go, look at that. Two people in the front, two astronauts. That's really interesting to see. Mars Science Laboratory, the Curiosity Rover, there you go. Fascinating to see these, aren't they? Really small as well. Mars 2020, Perseverance Rover. Wow. Back outside then now and something else to see here that's really cool. 
Look at this, the Mars Rover Vehicle Navigator. And yeah, this is actually an electric vehicle, which is really interesting. Yeah, of course, easy to get over the terrain and demanding landscape of Mars. Wow, a real modern vehicle. It's like something out of Avengers or something, isn't it? Like, look at that. Really impressive to see. Not seen any photos or videos of that before. So yeah, it's really cool. Now, I don't have a clue what's inside here, but we're gonna take a look. It's called the Astronaut Training Experience. I'm not too sure exactly what that entails. However, we'll go and find out. That looks really effective, doesn't it? <laughs> With the backdrop and then all the rocks just on the floor. The little things like that. It's really well done here. So I did read online about this. It's an additional upcharge experience. Uh, but yeah, you can see like the simulators uh, just inside there. And uh, yeah, I've just been chatting with a member of staff and it's actually booked up for the next month. So yeah, very popular experience. If you do want to do this, make sure you book it online way in advance. Now, other than a quick mention when I walked past earlier on, I've not spoken about the Universe Theatre. What you can actually do is meet an astronaut here, which is really exciting. And yeah, astronaut of the day is Mark Lee. And along with that, there's a few other different shows in here as well. I mean, they've all finished for the day now. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, there's quite a few different shows here in the Universe Theatre. It is well worth looking at the Times Guide and planning your day accordingly for everything that you want to see. Well, it's nearly time for me to get back onto the coach, so I'm going to make my way out of the turnstiles here. I am so pleased that I've managed to see today, though. Well, I've had an absolutely fantastic day here at the Kennedy Space Centre, Cape Canaveral. I've wanted to come here for a very long time. Ever since I was a kid, I always dreamed of coming here. However, when I do come to Florida, uh, every time, you know, it's the theme parks, they draw me in, and it's hard to get away from them, especially when you've got multi-day tickets for the parks. This time, that hasn't been the case, and I'd planned to come here as part of the itinerary. And you know what? It's been more than worth it. Uh, of course, getting here and seeing the Saturn V, that was awesome. But for me, seeing Atlantis and that the screen lifting up and the big reveal of that, oh, that certainly made it and I absolutely loved it. Along with that, just seeing the area, of course, where the, the launch pad is, the iconic buildings, um, or the rocket garden. There's so much here, there really is, even more than I was expecting. It's kind of like a bit of a theme park in a way, you know, it was tough for me to decide what channel to put it on. Uh, but then I thought, no, it does fit into Adventure Show in the category that I cover on here. Um, because obviously you have got the simulator ride. That wasn't anything spectacular however it's worth doing if you do come here for the experience but yeah it wasn't too intense and just seeing things like the countdown clock just there like I love stuff like that I'm just saying that I've been here and next time now when I'm watching one of the SpaceX takeoff or another rocket I can say I've been here now I've seen the site uh, where they launch it really has been a great day in terms of doing the guided tour that I have I would definitely recommend it because like I say you're not kind of um, you know having a tour around all day they literally um, give you the best advice get you here early take you straight to the back, get you in Atlantis early, get you on the simulator, and then you're off on your own accord. But uh, you definitely want to have a full day here. It's not a two, three hour thing. You wouldn't see much at all. Like that IMAX, I've not managed to see it. It was 40 minutes. I've just been chatting with a really nice guy who I met on the bus this morning. And he was saying he went to the IMAX and he says it wasn't great. He came out after 20 minutes. So I don't think I've missed much there, but I would have done it if I'd have had time, uh, especially to just share it all with you. However, uh, it's been a great day here at NASA, the Kennedy Space Center uh, here on Adventure Shore. And what an absolutely um, fantastic place. A big bucket list ticked off. And uh, very soon, in fact, in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be ticking off another bucket list. And this week I'll be sharing a video about my next abroad trip coming up at the end of March here on Adventure Shore. But uh, an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and have your own adventures. See you in the next video.